Now, ever since she was a young girl, our next guest has had a lifelong dream to shoot for the stars thanks to a family trip to NASA at the tender age of 11. Fast forward nearly 25 years and her dream is getting very much closer. Her passion to reach space is stronger than ever. Last October, she was one of 12 lucky scientists selected to take part in a vigorous training programme over in Florida, which now brings her even closer on the path to becoming Ireland's first ever person in space. Joining us now to tell us her story is Dr. Nora Patton and we're absolutely delighted <laughs> that you've joined us on the programme this morning. Oh, thanks a million. When you mean you want to be the first Irish person to go into space, what does that actually mean? Is that a flight into space? Are you going to land somewhere? Is it a walk on the moon? <laughs> what exactly is is the goal, is the dream? The, the, the big goal, the big dream. So uh, the project I did in Florida called Project Possum, they're more focused on the suborbital space flight market. So the next commercial vehicles that will come uh, into operation over the next few years. Um, but I guess like the ultimate dream for me would be to hopefully someday get to the International Space Station, you know, live and work up there for a few months. Uh, that would be like absolutely amazing. Um, but for me, as long as I'm progressing, down that road to hopefully someday getting into space, whether it be suborbital or to the ISS, you know, that's... So the, the suborbital means there's be a launch, you go up into space, you spend how much time up there? Um, so it would be flight dependent, but it could be like 30 minutes. Uh, it really depends on the flight trajectory. But uh, look, it, it's, uh, it's all moving in the right direction. I think, uh, you know, we've never had an Irish person in space. I feel like the whole country has got behind me on this. And, you know, there's such interest in it and, I've been at the BT Young Scientist all this week sharing this whole, uh, you know, journey with all of the young people there. And they're so excited to hear that, you know, I'm still progressing on that road. And we have had a few famous her. Irish names in space, though. The Collins is particularly. Yeah, yeah. So there's been a number of Irish, like, there's been a number of astronauts that have had Irish uh, heritage. So, for example, your, your heroine um, Eileen Collins. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, tell us about her. Yeah, was she she's the amazing. eureka moment for you? Um, I'd say the eureka moment was the trip to Kennedy Space Center when I was fifteen. So you'd already been to NASA when you were young, when you were eleven. Yes. And then you stepped it up a gear. Yes. So we have loads of relations over in Cleveland, <coughs> and we were on the family holiday, just visiting my mother's sister and my dad's cousins over there um, but then when I was 15 we were in Florida and I went to the Kennedy Space Centre and that was just like you know walking under the Saturn V stacked in its three stages you just think the feat of engineering that they achieved to go to the moon I was like this is absolutely amazing and this is where I want to go. So then um, I studied aeronautical engineering in uh, the University of Limerick and in my fourth year of college I met Eileen Collins and uh, I just thought she was such a cool person and what a great role model. No, for you know, and she was so personable, so lovely and she was so interested to hear what we were studying and what our ambitions were in life and so encouraging of that and I thought, you know, for somebody who had achieved so much, uh, she was just so lovely and that gave me such inspiration just coming out of college. So you did the study, <coughs> you did the uh, aeronautical engineering, you could have gone into supposed to lecturing or designing planes. So how do you go from having this degree and then this PhD to actually finding yourself over in Florida as you were? Um, pretending that you're taking off in a launch, a launch in a rocket and exposing your body to 4G and 0G forces. Yes, yes. Um, the training was amazing that I did in, in Florida. But um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's... Um, I had always been on the lookout for, you know, those space related activities and the space route that I could get involved in. So I did lecture for a few semesters mm -hmm. after my PhD, um, which was great and it was great experience. Um, and then in 2010, I took part in the space studies program um, and that was kind of my inlet to a global space community. And it was really through that then that a couple of colleagues of mine have done Project Possum and they said, Nora, you'd really take a lot from doing it and it's fantastic. So I applied and got accepted. Um, and that was really it. You know, I went over in October and um, they're training us as scientist astronaut candidates so that when the next commercial space vehicles like SpaceX, uh, not SpaceX, but um, Virgin Galactic uh, and Blue Origin start to actually fly, that we'll be qualified as scientists to fly on these vehicles. Nora, I, I I mean, what you've done or what you're doing is, is quite remarkable and it's absolutely fascinating. And it, it really is, it's funny, space travel was incredibly um, 
sexy when I was growing mm -hmm. up because I, I'm from the generation that, that saw the first landing on the moon and all the rest of it, but it was also science fiction being made real. Mm -hmm. Then it kind of waned for a bit and it's come back the last couple of years. Completely. But uh, for your generation, it, 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 there, there wouldn't have been much buzz about space. And I mean, you're from Ackle. Mm -hmm. now, yeah. now, by the way, there's nothing wrong with that, no. right? But, but how, does a, how does a young girl from Ackle look up at the sky and goes, you know what, some, someday I'm going to end up there. Where did, you know, did your, were your parents interested in it? Or? You're, yeah, you've so hit the nail on the head, I think. Um, it's, it's hard to kind of describe because if you think, you know, I was a girl in Mayo in the 1990s, growing up in Balna. My dad is from Ackle, mother from Belmullet. And, you know, they, they, sure, they had no interest in you know, space. Or... Well, say your dad is my age and he was probably watching a black and white furry, fuzzy TV uh, picture of those guys coming, you know. He, yeah, he's never spoken about that actually. Um, but, you know, I think it's like, you know, what I what I would always say to people, like, in me having that experience at 11, like, that was for me, not my mind made up and what I wanted to do. So um, it, it's not everybody who takes that interest. So that's why I think it's so important to get kids exposed to multiple different things when they're young, because you just don't know because your siblings what that dream is for them. Yeah, also absolutely. went to NASA, went absolutely. to Kennedy Space Station, and it didn't no, make them think, right, space, it that's spark, it, that's the job for yeah. me. But for you, it definitely sparked something. The training that you did in Florida is absolutely fascinating. Mm. Can you talk us through some of that? Yeah, yeah. I, I really, I really loved, like, just, it was all the hands on because I, I realised over the years I've done, like, a lot of academic study, but I really need to ramp up the actual physical training, the hands on. The quite practical side absolutely. of going into space, of absolutely. taking your body into space. Exactly. So that's when the, the opportunity for Possum came up. I, I said, it, I'm like absolutely going to do this. So we did um, high G flights. So we did 4G loads, which is essentially like right now we're under 1G. So if you can imagine four times your body weight. And the whole idea is that they're putting us through like a number of different processes so that when a, when a flight opportunity comes up that we'll have experienced all of the elements on the ground and we'll know how our bodies behave and react. So is that like a huge amount of pressure? Is that actually practically what it feels like? Yeah, yeah. So... Um, and you in a space suit. And so we were, we were in the flight suit in the aircraft. Um, and like you could absolutely feel like the, you could feel the pressure on your face. Mm. You could feel the blood flow down to the bottom, like the, the, the backs of my legs. And you can, you can absolutely feel like four Gs when you, when you, when you're under that load. And um, we also did the spacesuit training, which was fantastic to experience because uh, much more claustrophobic than I had thought, but I've done scuba diving. So I think that's where your previous training will absolutely feed in and help, you know, you in certain situations where it's claustrophobic. Um, so you, you, you literally put on the spacesuit and Possum are working with the company that's making the spacesuit for NASA. So it's very purpose you know, purpose training. Uh, you pull down the visor, clip it, and then um, it, you pressurise it. And, you know, even just to move and to work in that when it's pressurised is really quite difficult. They're not difficult. heavy, but they're cumbersome. They're exactly. awkward. Exactly. You're going yeah. to have to be in peak physical condition mm. as well. Yeah. You, you know? I, feel, I feel fantastic. I think, um, you know, the, I did an awful lot of training uh, before I went to Florida and I'm continuing that now this year. Um, so I, I actually was fine. Like I was, I wasn't tired or I wasn't, you know, even after a week of very intense physical training, I felt, felt grand. So that's how your body reacted. But you're obviously doing this with other people. Did other people react as well? Did everybody react, I suppose, as well as you did? Um, so... No. No. <laughs> you try to be diplomatic, I'm trying but to no. Say, well, one of the one of the guys, the poor thing, he like he got very sick on the flight. Uh, Actually, physically sick. Physically sick. Yeah. Um, Doesn't everybody though, when they when they when they experience the G's for the first time, or most people? Um, I don't know the statistics in terms of how many a on, a, on a flight, but like I didn't get sick and actually after my second flight I felt even better than after my first ah, flight. Ah, they breed them tough and male. <laughs> there you go. Can, listen, can I ask you, because we, I, I, look, this, we could spend the next hour talking to you, Absolutely. we still wouldn't get to the bottom of it, but Chris Hadfield has unquestionably done wonders for the image of, of astronauts. He's also raised the bar in terms of what you do when you get up there. Mm. So do you have a song you're going to sing and post on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> that, I'll have to think about that one. That's a tough question. I actually got 
that asked. Um, so we did a Q&A yesterday at the BT Young Scientist and one of, we had five winners and one of the questions was what would be your famous quote uh, if you got to space? And uh, I, I actually had to think about that and I thought, you know, for me, I've always loved to take people along on my journey. You know, I've always, you know, even when I went to Florida, we did a mission patch design competition with nearly 300 kids designing me mission patches to bring to Florida. So for that, I, I said, what I'd like to do there is leave it open to the Irish public to decide what my famous quote would be, because I think it's so important that, you know, I have been, had such unbelievable um, support. support and I just think the whole of Ireland seems to be behind me in this. Oh, so I will do my absolute okay, best. So send us you. in, send us in. <laughs> oh. Mayo for the Sam McGuire dish. No, it has, it has to be Ireland. It has to be Ireland. Something but Mayo for Sam, yes. You do need continued support and sponsorship. Absolutely. You need funding, don't you? This, I do, yeah. This doesn't come cheap, and particularly now to get to the next stage. Yes, so, like, um, the next phase of the training is in April, so I really, I do need to get sponsorship. So, you know, if there's companies or organisations out there that are, you know, have uh, sponsorship there, I'm I'm totally open, open to, to it. So Nora, you're an absolute inspiration. You've had two visits so on the much. Ireland AM, Coach. Mm. Hopefully when you complete the hat-trick, <laughs> you will have been to space and you'll come back and tell us all about it. Fingers yeah. crossed. We'll send yeah. an Thanks. Ireland Thanks AM mug up with you or Thanks something. <laughs> you can leave it up at the space station. Lovely to meet you. You and too. Continue Thanks to a success. million.